In this example, we need to simplify these three expressions here. They all involve square roots. And in simplifying square roots, it's very useful to be familiar with the most common perfect squares. What I mean by that is here's a table of x and x squared. So here are the most commonly used perfect squares. So it's useful to recognize them. So let's look at our first example, the square root of 81. What do we mean by the square root of 81? It means what number when multiplied by itself gives me 81. So is 81 a perfect square? Yes, it's 9 squared. So what is the square root of 81? What number multiplied by itself gives me 81? And the answer is 9. In the second example, I'm asked to find the negative square root of 64. I'm going to write a couple of extra steps in this example to explain what's going on. But really, if I have a negative in front of a square root, it means I have negative 1 times that square root. So when I work this out, I'm going to get negative 1 times whatever the square root of 64 is. What's the square root of 64? 64 is a perfect square. It's 8 squared. The square root of 64 is 8. So my answer is just negative 1 times 8 is negative 8. Normally, we don't write this step in here. We just go straight to the answer. And in the third example, I'm asked to find the square root of 121 over 144. Well, this is equal to the square root of 121 over the square root of 144. Is 121 a perfect square? Yes, it's 11 squared. So the square root of 121 is 11 divided by the square root of 144. 144 is 12 squared, so the square root of 144 is 12. So my answer is 11 twelfths.